Hey friends, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again today for another Sunday School lesson. If you've joined us in the previous weeks, you might remember that we're learning about God's commandments. Remember, God's commandments are not just a bunch of rules that we have to follow. God's commandments are like street signs that show us the best way to live. We visited quite a few streets so far, so let's talk about the ones that we visited in previous weeks. We visited First Street and we learned that we put God first. Can you say that? We put God first. Then we visited Real God Road and we learned there's only one real God. Can you say that, boys and girls? There's only one real God. Then we visited Name Lane. And on Name Lane, we learned that we need to treat God's name with respect. We show special honor when we use his name. On the fourth week, we visited Sabbath Street. And we learned that we also have a special day for God where we rest and we give honor to him. Then we visited Parent Parkway and we learned that we need to show honor to our parents. And that just means that we show them love by listening to them and doing things that bring joy to their hearts. Then we visited No Pain Lane and we learned that we don't hurt others. Can everybody say that with me? We don't hurt others. We learned God's commandment that says that we should not murder, but we also learned from Cain and Abel's story how there are small choices to hurt others that can lead up to bigger choices to hurt others. And we don't want to hurt others because that's not the best way to live. Well, today we're gonna visit Giving Boulevard and we're going to learn another commandment of God's that says we don't steal. Instead of stealing and being greedy, we're gonna learn about how to be generous today, okay? So come on, let's learn together. Today's true Bible story is about a man named Judas. Some of you might recognize that name. Judas was one of the 12 disciples, and yes, Judas was the disciple who betrayed Jesus on the night he was arrested and told the soldiers where they could find Jesus. So he definitely has made some mistakes. This story takes place before he betrayed Jesus. And before we can talk about what happens in the story, we need to understand a little bit more about Judas. So Judas, as part of the 12 disciples, was the treasurer, and that meant that he kept track of all the money. So if the disciples needed to go to the market and buy food, Judas was the one who would pay for the food. Or if they needed to go to the temple and give their offering, Judas was responsible for giving their offering. If they needed to rent a donkey to go someplace, well, Judas was the one who had to pay the fee. And if they needed new sandals, Judas was the one who would pay the bill. New sandals. But there was a problem, you guys, because Judas was also a thief. And so every time that he had to pay some of the bill for something, Judas would also take money out of the, um, the disciples' money and he would keep it for himself. And that was stealing. So this is what we need to understand about Judas in order to understand our Bible story. Judas was a thief and he did steal. So today's Bible story is found in John chapter 12 and we're gonna read the first couple of verses to see what happens. Six days before the Passover feast, Jesus went to Bethany where Lazarus lived. Lazarus is the man that Jesus raised from the dead. There they had dinner for Jesus. Martha served the food. Lazarus was one of the people eating with Jesus. Mary brought a pint, a very expensive perfume made from pure nard. She poured the perfume on Jesus's feet and she wiped his feet with her hair. And the sweet smell from the perfume filled the whole house. Wow, what a beautiful thing that Mary did. But guess what guys, Judas was there. And what do you think Judas thought about Mary's choice? This Bible verse tells us that it was very expensive perfume. Guess what Judas said when he saw what Mary did? He said, this perfume was worth an entire year's wages. It should have been sold and given to the poor. So when Mary took the perfume and poured it on Jesus's feet, imagine that these are Jesus's feet. And this is Mary's perfume. 
this is a pint and that's what the Bible verse says um, was the amount of perfume that she poured that's a lot of perfume isn't it guys Wow I mean my perfume is in a little teeny bottle this is a lot of perfume and so she poured it all over Jesus's feet but I imagine this is what Judas saw when he saw Mary do that all he saw was that she was wasting money that's what he thought he thought pouring that perfume out on Jesus's feet was a waste but we talked about earlier that Judas was a thief right so do you think he really wanted to take the money from the perfume and give it to the poor hmm thumbs up or thumbs down I think thumbs down he probably did not want to do that listen to the next verse this is John 12, 6. Judas did not really care about the poor. Mm -mm. He said this because he was a thief. He was the one who kept the money box and he often stole money from it. So Judas, um, in, when he saw Mary do this, he was upset because he knew that he had an opportunity to get more money if that perfume had been sold and the money had come into his bag of money that he was in charge of, then he could have kept some of it for himself. So Judas wasn't really thinking about the poor. He wanted to steal, okay? But let's think about it from Mary's perspective. Why did Mary pour the perfume on Jesus's feet? She wasn't trying to waste money. No, Mary was being generous. You see guys, everything that we have been given comes from God. He gives it to us and he doesn't give it to us so that we can hold it tightly for ourselves. He gives it to us so that we can be generous and bless other people. If he has given you a lot of things in your home, use that to bless other people. You can be generous. You can share. You can give things away to people who don't have anything, whether that's extra toys or clothing or food for a food drive. There are so many ways that we can be generous with what God has given us. He doesn't give stuff so that we can just be greedy with it and want more and more for ourselves like Judas. He wants us to be generous with what he gives us and to share it with others just like Mary did. So remember, God's commandment on giving Boulevard teaches us we don't steal. That's not God's heart for us. That's not the best way to live, always being greedy and wanting more and more for ourselves. The best way to live is with a generous heart, to be giving, to give to other people as much as you can. At the end of this story, this is what Jesus says to Judas. Let her alone. It was right for her to save this perfume for today, the day for me to be prepared for my burial. The poor will always be with you, but you will not always have me. See, Jesus knew that his time on earth was coming to a close and he knew that he was going to die and he knew that what Mary did for him was such a beautiful thing. And he, and he gives us um, an example of how he wants us to live like Mary, to be generous and to be thinking of how we can give to others instead of being greedy and keeping for ourselves. The gift that Mary gave to Jesus was an act of worship. So when you choose to be generous, um, even though you're not giving it directly to Jesus, I want you to know that that's an act of worship for Jesus. When you give away um, toys or money or clothes or time or food, when you give away things that God has given you to other people who have need of it, that is an act of worship, friend. And that is a beautiful thing to do. And God always is pleased when we have a generous heart like Mary. Remember, his commandment for us today is that we don't steal. We don't have a greedy heart that wants more and more for ourselves. Instead, we need to remember Giving Boulevard and that we should always be generous with others. Thank you guys for watching today. I hope you enjoy our little video up next. I'll see you next time. Bye, friends. is Noah. He lives in Colorado with his mom, dad, big brother Cademan, and his dog Sam. He loves playing the ukulele, riding his shrike, and playing with Sam. Noah's mom teaches kindergarten, 
and sometimes he hangs out in her classroom with his friend Jared before going to his own 6th grade classroom across the street. One morning, Jared found some money on the floor of the kindergarten classroom. My friend was probably thinking, oh fine, just keepers, but like, finding someone's money is to me the same thing as stealing it, and we shouldn't do that. Noah explained that since they don't know whose money it was, that they should leave it in the classroom for his mom to find the owner. Jared agreed to leave the money in the classroom, but when Noah wasn't looking, he picked the money up and took it. They walked across the street to their middle school like every other morning. As they walked into the school, Noah got a surprise. Before we got there, he pulled out a dollar, and I'm like, where'd you get that? He's like, oh, I just found it, like, I already had it. Making ex he was making like excuses, and I'm like, wait, that doll is folded. It looks a lot like the doll in the classroom, like folded in the same way. And he ended up telling me that he actually got it from the classroom. No one knows that it is wrong to steal. In the Bible, in the book of Exodus, it says, you must not steal. When I discovered that he had stolen the doll, I tried to talk to him, but they didn't listen. So he was like, let's buy something at the vending machine. I'm like, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. This is stealing. And um, so he put it in the vending machine. And I knew it was wrong, so I pressed the change button to get the money. And I'm like, we need to give this back to them after school. After school, Noah took the money back to the kindergarten class to give to his mom. She was so proud of him for doing the right thing. And her student was so happy to get his money back. It was good that I returned the dollar because if I didn't return the dollar, a kindergartner wouldn't be able to buy anything from the book fair and they'd be really sad. Jared made a mistake by taking the money. Fortunately, his friend Noah was there to do the right thing and help Jared see that stealing is wrong. I couldn't believe my friend would do something like that. He's such a good kid. He's kind and helpful, but sometimes we all make bad choices. But the great thing is God is always there to forgive us.